don't think it levels the playing field. It allows people to just be on the playing field. Why did you spell com, C-O-M-E, instead of C-U-M? The Justice Department announced that after a 16-year hiatus, it's going to resume executing inmates on death row at a time when public support for capital punishment is close to its historic low. Attorney General William Barr ordered the Bureau of Prisons to schedule executions of five of the 62 inmates currently on federal death row and directed the Bureau to replace the previously used three-drug cocktail with one, phenobarbital. The Naval Criminal Investigative Service arrested 16 Marines at Camp Pendleton suspected of human smuggling and drug-related offenses. Today's arrest stemmed from new information following the arraignment of two Marines from the same battalion earlier this month, accused of smuggling three Mexicans into the country for money. We don't want no problems with these boys. They keep following them. Despite efforts by President Trump to get ASAP Rocky released from Swedish prison, prosecutors charged the rapper today with assault in connection to a street fight in Stockholm last month. Rocky posted videos of the confrontation on Instagram, saying they back up his claim that he was acting in self-defense. We don't want to fight y'all. We're not trying to go to jail. Swedish prosecutors say he'll remain in custody until his trial on Tuesday. Ford, Honda, BMW, and Volkswagen have struck a deal with California to increase the fuel efficiency of their vehicles to an average of 50 miles per gallon by 2026. That's in line with Obama-era environmental rules, rules which the Trump administration has been feverishly attempting to roll back, along with efforts to block California and other states from adopting their own limits on emissions. On Wednesday, crowds started to gather outside Governor Ricardo Rosselló's mansion. Rumors of his resignation had started to bubble overnight, nearly two weeks after the popular uprising began. People stayed there all day, waiting for the governor to make his next move. At 4 p.m., reporters were called into the mansion for a press conference, but hours ticked by and Rosselló was nowhere to be found. How much more do you think Puerto Ricans can take? Much more. I think this is the last straw. Um, we cannot go back from this, and we've seen too much. We've seen the consequences of being indifferent. We've seen the consequences of not caring, of not going out and voting. So I think the elections coming up are going to be key, and we're going to have the biggest turnout. I'm sure of that. As night fell, tensions grew. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Protesters sat down as a dare to police and to commemorate the victims of Hurricane Maria. Inside the mansion, Rosselló was making a choice. Would he resign that night or face impeachment in the morning? Then, a half hour before midnight, the frustrated crowd started calling for quiet. For 14 minutes, Puerto Ricans were glued to their phones when Governor Rosselló said the words they'd been waiting for. Hoy les anuncio estaré renunciando al puesto del gobernador. For now, it looks like Wanda Vasquez, the current Secretary of Justice appointed by Rosselló, will take over as interim governor. Protesters don't like her either, and they were on the streets today to show it. Demonstrators don't just want Vasquez gone. Many of them want La Junta gone too. That's the nickname that Puerto Ricans have given the Financial Oversight Management Board, responsible for trying to pull Puerto Rico out of the island's $70 billion debt. The board was appointed by President Obama in 2016, and Puerto Ricans have hated it ever since. It controls the island's financial restructuring efforts and has cut spending, but through an aggressive austerity program, which slashed social services and the minimum wage and proposed cuts to pensions. La Junta Fiscal, igualmente, con la, con la promesa, tiene que salir del país y la vamos a sacar. Eso es parte de lo que vamos a estar haciendo próximamente. 
Yet even with a different governor or a financial oversight board, Puerto Rico is still facing serious challenges, including a multi-billion dollar debt crisis, a 12-year recession, and failing institutions. That's part of what's brought the island to this moment. And any of the possible solutions to any one of these problems probably won't please anyone. Two, three, five, four? Yeah. Right, staircases. Love staircases. <laughs> Political fundraising normally involves a lot of phone calls to rich people. Go, I go, go, yum. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Uh, cháu tên là Amy Nguyễn, cháu đang ra ứng cử hội đồng thành phố Seattle. Yeah. But Amy Nguyễn is talking to people who usually don't get hit up for donations. Thành phố Seattle, nó cho mỗi người mà đã uh, đăng ký để ra ứng cử á, nó cho tặng 100 đồng mà chú có thể đưa cho người mà đơn rón cử thì cái này là tiếng Việt chú đọc chút xíu nha. Going door to door has been pretty lucrative for Win. Mostly thanks to Seattle's Democracy Voucher program. It gives me an opportunity to talk to to people who I otherwise wouldn't have a chance to talk to. Voters approved the voucher program in 2015 along with a 3 million dollar a year property tax to fund it. At the beginning of this year's city council election, the government dipped into that fund to send voters four $25 vouchers to give to candidates of their choice. So, this is where all the power thinking happens. Um, this, is, this is all in, all in the house. <laughs> yep, this is the desk, and then there's my printer. Um, on top of the dog on cage. On top of the dog. dog. <laughs> so, yep, this is it. So this is what a campaign looks like on on the democracy, democracy vouchers, vouchers, yeah. It sounds like your campaign is, in a large part, being helped by the fact that this source of funding exists. Definitely. If I were not using the democracy vouchers, I think I may have been able to raise $20,000 max. Our funding for uh, for the primary race, we received $57,000 in democracy vouchers. That's a lot of money. So instead, instead of calling you know, somebody who you, is a business owner who you know, you know what, this guy is probably good for 20 Gs. Now you're looking at a building of people yes. and saying, that building right there is probably worth about two, $3,000 if we go hit that up. I don't go to buildings and say, oh, how much can I cash out? Coming from an uh, immigrant community, my background might not be able to connect with a lot of rich people, but my, my background is able to connect with a lot of poor people. The idea of democracy vouchers in general, right, is that it, it levels a playing field. I don't think it levels the playing field. It allows people to just be on the playing field. Um, and from there, you have a fighting chance to win. This year, there's seven city council seats up for grabs in the August 6th primary. And the program has already distributed over $1.3 million in all. In Amy Wynn's district, every candidate is using democracy vouchers, except for one. Shama Sawant is the incumbent. She became something of a celebrity six years ago after she was the first socialist to win a seat on the city council in over a century. Join with us in building a mass movement for economic and social justice. She's decided not to take the vouchers because of the funding cap rule. Before candidates can get the money, they have to sign a pledge that they won't raise more than $75,000 in cash and voucher donations combined during the primary election. If they win the primary, that limit increases to $150,000 total for the election cycle. But thanks to the 2010 Supreme Court Citizens United decision, there's nothing stopping outside groups from spending their own money to influence the election. Like the Seattle Chamber of Commerce's PAC, which is fighting against Sawant's re-election campaign with a million dollars in the bank. A quarter of that was donated by Amazon. Sawant's hoping she can combat those big money donors with small ones. Once again, we see the management of this time. So far, she's raised more than $225,000. On the one hand, democracy vouchers seem like 
something that's very attractive politically, philosophically, to a socialist. But you're opting out of that. Absolutely, that is the kind of society we want to get. But we have to keep in mind that because of Citizens United, it still means that big corporations and wealthy people have no limits, zero limits for the amount of cash they can flood into any race. And so for us to have signed up for democracy vouchers, knowing that there's going to be uh, an, you know, an, an engulfing of this district by corporate money would have been to ask us to fight against Amazon with one hand tied behind our back. So was that kind of like fight capital with capital? Uh, we don't call it capital. We call it the uh, self-sacrificing donations of ordinary working people who are together united in a fight back against capitalism. So Watts raised so much money that her competitors complained. So the election committee raised their spending limits. Even so, Amy Wynn probably won't be able to raise the same kind of money that Sawan is. If politicians and candidates could be funded by uh, public money but choose not to, then who are they going to owe? What favor are they going to owe? And to whom when they get into office? Programs like Democracy Vouchers allows that catalyst for people to think about how politicians and candidates are being funded. This is the second time the Seattle's used vouchers for candidates. And so far, it's the only city in the U.S. with the program. But it's getting national attention, including for presidential candidate Kirsten Gillibrand. It would upend Washington in one year, and you would have different people participating in our elections, you'd have different people getting elected, uh, and our voices would be heard. It would restore our democracy back into the hands of the people. Margaret Morales is a researcher with a think tank that developed the Democracy Voucher Program. I think that there is a great need for different ideas about how to run our elections. And I think people are hungry for campaign finance reform. So I see a pathway that maybe this could become something national. With time. With time. Mm -hmm. How long are we talking here? I think we'll need several more data points from Seattle. A lot depends on the next few elections at the national scale and how upset people get. I think that you see change happen much more quickly when people are upset about how our democracy is not serving them. Agricultura de allí, pues, son cosas que han venido desde muy atrás, desde mis abuelos. Y mis abuelos crecieron a mis padres así, y ahora yo estoy creciendo a mis hijos también. Ya. Enseñándolas a trabajar en la tierra. Para nosotros es una amenaza pues, el clima como ha estado, porque nada que ver con los tiempos de atrás. Había veces que pues, ya va a llover y entre mañana pasado llueve. Ahora no, hoy cuando acuerdas que está el agua encima o, o viene la, la sequedad. Sí, se le hace, a uno de este campesinos se le hace difícil, pues, peor si no tiene quien lo oriente. Y aunque uno quiera cultivar la tierra, pues tal vez no la va a poder cultivar por, por el cambio climático. Cuando más necesitaban agua era cuando no la, no la tuvieron, entonces eso, pues por eso fue que los bajó el rendimiento de esta cosecha. El año pasado saqué como 74 quintales y ahora anduve por los 50 quintales. Perdimos aproximadamente como el 50% de la producción. A veces uno cuando mira ejemplos de otros amigos o de otros vecinos, otras, otras, de otras personas que uno conoce, pues a uno le dan ganas de emigrar, pero... Y que sabe andar pasando aquí, este me dijo. Hay una persona allá que en los Estados Unidos que me decía que, que me apoyaba, que me fuera, y me costó tomar la decisión de decirle a él que sí. La persona que estaba allá habló con un este coyote que él me venía a traer aquí a la casa y yo quería irme, pues, pero... En ese entonces solo valía 5 mil dólares. Ahora, pues, 
unos hablan de 10, otros hablan de 12 mil dólares, no, no sé exactamente. Nosotros en Guarita, en este municipio, más o menos un 5% ha emigrado a los Estados Unidos. La gente cree que no es negocio producir, si no tiene, hay una buena cosecha, entonces tiene pérdidas, entonces prefiere irse en lugar de vivir aquí. El cambio climático entonces ha influido para que más personas tomen la decisión de irse. Nosotros hacemos esto porque es lo que hay por el momento. La recompensa es poca, solo se sobrevive, no se supera muy fácil trabajando en esto. Allá ganaríamos una hora, lo que aquí ganamos en un día completo, trabajando ocho horas. Entonces sí lo haríamos de emigrar. Sí, ahí tienes cuidado, Loncho, porque se están metiendo el maíz allí, y es así era el, el, el ensamble que había ahí. Y uno, si se pone a pensar qué va a ser dentro de 15 o 20 años, no sé, mis hijos, si yo estoy todavía o no estoy, o, o, o mis hijos, qué van a hacer. Si el invierno no está bueno, pues, qué va a ser de la vida de ellos. There was a person I met in the UK and he was like, I just have a question. Why did you spell com, C-O-M-E, instead of C-U-M? And I was like, because I don't want graffiti in my book. My name is Lisa Tadeo, and I'm here to talk about my book, Three Women. It's nonfiction. Everything is utterly true. The reason it's detailed and reads like a novel is because I spent all this time with these women. And also, it's about desire. It's not about, you know, dog sledding. He drinks cans of beer, and his breath always has that taste, which Lena has come to associate with pure passion. The most difficult part was 100% finding the people. Finding Lena was impossible and took forever. I handed it Lena's section into my editor at that point, and he was like, this is phenomenal. Just do this a couple more times. I was like, that's fucked up, man. I drove across the country six times. I moved to diff different places. I moved to places where my subjects live. I posted signs in bizarre places. If I put it in this buckhead salon, and if I put it in the Four Seasons bathroom above the changing table, if I put it in this barbecue joint in Mobile with all these like motorcycle dudes and they're gonna find someone. Over the course of the eight years, I spoke to hundreds of people for an hour or two to several weeks weeks to several months to several years. The three women who remain are the ones who just let me into their minds and hearts and bedrooms. Men come to insert themselves. They turn a girl into a city. One of the women was a high school student in Fargo, North Dakota, who had come forward about an alleged relationship she'd had with her high school English teacher, who went on to be named Teacher of the Year. I think the most shocking thing about it to me was that they'd never had actual intercourse. There were text messages that had been deleted, but there were like hours of phone calls that went on past 11 at midnight. And everybody was kind of just not talking about those. And it's like, you know, like my mother once said, nothing good happens after midnight. Sloan always did the perfect amount of every drug. Sometimes the perfect amount meant overdoing it, and so that was what she'd do. Sloan and her husband, they have one of the happier marriages that I've ever seen. So I heard about Sloan from several people, two of them women, literally said the exact same thing. Her husband liked to have sex with her every day. The sort of way with which that was conveyed to me was like with horror. And she said, you know, he tells me every day that I'm his fantasy and he's great with the kids and he does all these things for me. And hey, look, he likes to watch me fuck other people. So fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Can you imagine begging to be touched by the man who swore to love you forever? I moved to uh, rural Indiana and I met a woman who had been in a marriage for 11 years with a man who said he no longer wanted to kiss her on the mouth. I think he said that the sensation reminded him of wet wool. She was like, if it gets to three months and he doesn't touch me, then I'm going to leave him. The clock struck midnight is how she put it to me and she was just like, that's it, it's fucking over. Parts of her she never thinks about begin to glow and quiver. 
who met up with Aiden, they had sex in his car at the river where they had used to hook up when they were kids. It was kind of this like magical thing for her. I would go to it like directly after so that I could hear the same sounds and smell the same things in the same atmosphere that she had just been in so that I could not only take her words but also take the sensations of the world that had been around her into account. There are men and there are women and one still rules the other in certain pockets of the country. The crux of the book in many ways was the judgment of other people, mainly women, upon other women. I hope that people will realize that, you know, judgment is terrible and it's one of the reasons that we have so much shame over things as important to us as our sex lives and our desire.